You've been waiting for this for months. You've practiced collecting your samples, you've prepared your workspace, and you're ready for that great feeling of finally getting that piece of data. But right at the last minute, you realize that you're out of gloves. Could you just ask a neighbor? Hi, my name is Susanna Harris, and this is the Science of Lab Safety, brought to you by Lab Safety Specialists. We might already know that there are certain rules we need to follow while working in a science laboratory, but we might not exactly know why those rules are important, other than to keep us out of trouble. So let's explore the exciting, the unexpected, and the sometimes scary facts behind the science of lab safety. At some point, you've probably been taught to wear gloves in a laboratory setting. Now, not all researchers need gloves, but if you do, no glove, no science. So why do scientists wear gloves anyway? There are basically two reasons. One is to keep their hands off their science, and the other is to keep their science off of their hands. The stuff that comes off of our hands, like oil, bacteria, and dirt can be pretty easily contained by gloves made of nitrile or latex. And changing these gloves in between experiments can make sure that nothing you get on your hands in one setting gets onto whatever you're doing next. You don't really need to worry about the specific designation for the gloves with this part, other than to make sure you aren't using latex gloves if you or others in the lab have an allergy to latex. Even with a latex allergy though, there are still plenty of ways to practice safe science. But keeping things off of your hands might require a little bit more thought. And this is why you can't just buy one type of glove and think it's going to work for all situations. Laboratory gloves are classified by which types of chemicals can and can't penetrate through to your skin. And this is penetration even without tears or holes in the gloves. And with dangerous chemicals, there's no such thing as good penetration. Once the most commonly used disposable glove type, latex gloves are great at protecting you from many non-toxic and non-hazardous chemicals. Many labs have switched over to using nitrile disposable gloves, both to reduce the risk of allergic reactions and because they are less likely to tear. However, nitrile gloves are more expensive, less flexible, and slower to degrade. The extreme importance of proper glove use is highlighted with a chemical called dimethylmercury. Even a few drops of this chemical can eventually lead to death. That's why it's important if you have that chemical in your lab to make sure you have some highly resistant laminate gloves on hand. Given that there are hundreds of different glove types, how can you figure out the right ones for your laboratory? First off, know your specific needs. You want to consider which chemicals you will use along with their pH measurements, what temperatures you'll be working at, what kinds of physical hazard, like sharp objects, you might encounter, and whether you might handle any toxic or biologically hazardous material. Know whether this will be a quick or occasional contact, or whether you plan to use the pair of gloves for an extended period of time. Second, always check for signs of breakdown. Nobody wants an accident. And never reuse disposable gloves. As with dimethylmercury, many types of chemicals shouldn't be handled with the same pair of gloves for an extended period of time. Third, size matters in a lot of ways. While you might think that the best fit is a tight fit, you still want to be able to easily move your fingers without stretching the gloves too much. Depending on the situation, you might need gloves with long sleeves to be fully protected. And lastly, clearly label and organize your gloves. The last thing you want is to realize you've run out of the gloves you need right when you need them. A key to lab success is knowing how to handle your equipment. Your gloves are the first line of defense for your personal safety. So remember, when choosing the right gloves for the job, you shouldn't just rely on getting lucky.